Well, hello lovely people, how are you doing? And I certainly wish I had more time for doing all these videos. <laughs> Basically, a patron sent me an, an, an article, this article, the 1257 Samalas eruption, a worldwide catastrophe, the likes of, of which, a, a massive worldwide catastrophe, making it one of the largest volcanic eruptions during the Holocene Epoch. He said this was a worldwide super catastrophe, and you don't really hear about it, do you? If you look at the articles at the end of this, this massive article, uh, it's, I never, I've never heard of this, to be honest. It, it's all recent articles. This has only been maybe recently found out. And I thought, well, that rings a bell because I did my PhD work on a 1258 English revolution. This is a work by a guy called um, uh, Adrian Jobson, The First English Revolution, and it's from 1258. And if you haven't heard of this, maybe you've heard of Simon de Montfort. And this is when this English revolution occurred. And basically uh, what happened was um, Henry III had been in charge and England was basically at the time, believe it or not, it was a large empire, but it, it, it had parts of, part of Ireland, it had, um, Scotland was subservient, it had part of France, Poteau, he was trying to grab Sicily, but it was also a papal ally or a papal state. In addition, there were many um, people from uh, the continent in Britain in charge, people from Italy in charge. And it was seen as a kind of foreign oppression. And then, boom, 1258, a cat this catastrophe seems to have occurred in 1257. There must have been starvation. And I've read about this in, in the Chronicles of Matthew Paris. So what happened was, after presumably after this supervolcano uh, erupted, what happened in uh, 1257 was, uh, 1258 was there was a mad, mad parliament. And basically they approached King Henry III, as they had approached his father, King John, and said, you're going to sign these, these documents for us, sir. And Henry VIII, is, uh, Henry III, as King John had done before him, sort of reluctantly signed and scowled and plotted his revenge. And that is what occurred. And what happened was that a parliament was set up and, and um, there was a speaker and <laughs> and and the parliament this the, the the parliament lasted from 1258 until 1264 when absolute monarchy was restored what happened was king um henry uh, king henry the 3rd raised an army went back over the channel fought a few battles and uh his son was longshanks uh so longshanks uh, obviously was a very capable man matthew paris records all of this and what I noticed was, uh, because I did my PhD on this exact subject, uh, in, 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 but uh, more broadly because of the fact I was studying the Robin Hood legends, and, and I found out it was from this period. Robin Hood legends actually became popular in this period because they were seen by the masses as a rallying cry to how how the the English would overthrow this foreign occupation, the fact they were a papal state, the fact that um, they were all all, the, all their nobles seemed to be uh, foreigners from what is now France or even from Italy, and the English nobles didn't have much of a say. And this provisions of Oxford, this mad Parliament, was an attempt to restore normalcy and to have a king that was uh, they wanted a king who was an English king not a king who was always constantly throwing money away to foreign interests, which is what Henry III was perceived to be doing. And this Henry the, this, this guy, Matthew Paris, a chronicler at St Albans, a day ride north of London, uh, would write over and over again how the, the foreigners were, were, were taking all the money out of England, shipping it overseas. And, uh, and my, my professor said to me, do you think uh, Matthew Paris would have been a Brexiter? <laughs> and I, I suppose he would have. Matthew Paris also, uh, in my Atlantis videos, he recorded that old map of England, which, which seems to look like a, 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 a Union Jack, as someone suggested, roads going north, south, east, west, with Avalon in the middle, um, basically um, uh, Avebury in the middle, right in the middle, uh, which shows that that map is probably 5,000 years old or 4,000 years old. And he, Matthew Paris writes about the sheriffs uh, being extremely corrupt, taking people for all they were worth. He writes about starvation in England. He writes about these, these foreigners who had, who had taken uh, episcopal seats in England 
denying food to the populace because they wanted to sell it. They wanted to sell the food for high prices because they saw the English as slaves and that and all the food was rotting away anyway due to endless rains and freak weather and all sorts of things, probably generated by this super volcano. And um, that is what happens. And you can also read, uh, for example, in Thomas Wright's The Political Songs of England, an Enlightenment scholar who recorded the English popular voice, which you, you cannot find because the records are destroyed. There were no books, no books. And but there there were there were some scribb scribbles there are some scribbles that survive some scribblings and, and they they're poetry and they say the English are languishing under foreign occupation like the Israelites under the Pharaoh and of course I've often wondered why the Angevin Empire collapsed and this is probably why the Plantagenet the Angevin Empire was huge this is the Angevin Empire in 1190 A.D. And you can see for yourself uh, what's... Well, that didn't work, did it? You can see for yourself what's going on with the Angevin Empire. Basically, what happened was William the Conqueror had this territory, Normandy, and he conquered England, part of Ireland. The Normans conquered part of Ireland. They say, they said, OK, we're now the king of Ireland. Then, they, then future generations married into the Duchy of Aquitaine, and they had this massive empire. And um, the Angevin Empire... Uh, if you if you look at what it constituted, um, this is why there were uh, French people in charge of uh, England because and uh, and these were seen as foreigners occupying England because these were Henry's favourites. He preferred he was it was complained that he preferred the foreigners to his own subjects, and you see here the English king had more land in France than the French king. Unbelievable. There's there's a bit of Burgundy. Uh, that's the French domains right there, and possibly that as well. And in the the, the next, uh, uh, the, the previous, uh, this was now this was um, this was before just before Henry's time, a, a few generations earlier. Henry actually only had that because his father John had um, lost it for some reason. He was very inept, very psychopathic. Everyone hated him. Everyone around him hated him. He lost all of these territories. He just possessed that and, he, and part of London. At the time he died, there was a massive civil war. And what happened was after 1258, there was a battle of the Battle of Lewis in 1264. And this was a victory. The parliamentary forces defeated King, uh, King Henry and his son Longshanks, who was not called Longshanks at the time, uh, Edward. And... Uh, there are poems written in Thomas Wright's uh, Thomas Wright's collection that he found, a collection of political songs, uh, saying e England now breathes the spirit of liberty and, and is now free and has their own government. But soon after, uh, the death and mutilation of Simon de Montfort, the Battle of Evesham, and what happened here was... Uh, after the battle, um, uh, Simon de Montfort, who was the leader of this of the of this movement, um, along with the rebellious northern barons, uh, Simon de Montfort was drawn, hanged, and quartered. And uh, also in this time, I discovered that, that there were many outlaws who called themselves Robin Hoods after some previous character. Uh, you can read my uh, PhD work; I'll put a link to it in the, in the description. And this is what happened to Simon de Montfort, and that was the end of the movement. And over time, people kind of forgot about it. And uh, but it, his site became a site of pilgrimage for people who remembered the movement and remembered what once what might have been. And of course, that's Longshanks. And the thing is, Longshanks, although a very capable ruler, Edward uh, Edward the Second, I think he was, and uh, no, Edward the First, Edward the First, um, he had trouble keeping Scotland under his thumb. He had a tiny part of France. He invaded France and, and tried to take back what had been lost. Yes, he was successful in that, but he, he had trouble with Scotland. But the previous Angevins had so much money, so much power, that what they were able to do was uh, the Scottish king very happily gave tribute to them. The Irish very happily paid tribute to the Angevins. But a few generations later, under Longshanks, England couldn't muster the power to control Scotland, couldn't reconquer this territory. They didn't have enough money. Why? Their economy wasn't the same as the economy 100 years later. Why? 
Could it be the, the effects of the super volcano? In addition, there's a, there's a temperature spectrum. Over a, hundred, over a thousand years, the temperature goes down and then it goes back up again. So every thousand years, there's a warm period. So it was starting to cool down. So uh, perhaps uh, less sunspots, the economy was slowing down, less crops, less money overall. And Longshanks was unable to reconquer everything. By the way, if you want to read about Henry III, I've noticed finally there is a biography. So there has been no biography on Henry III since the 1940s because he's such a boring, honestly, bit of a loser. Um, but he ruled for 60 years <laughs> despite this. A very paradoxical person. Uh, the previous biography is by Poic in the 40s, two academic volumes which you can't get and they're too boring and long anyway. So it looks, looks like this is the popular one. It's, already, it's 2020 and it's already got 60 reviews. Unbelievable by David Carpenter, who's a medievalist. Unbelievable, just unbelievable guy. I just can't believe it. Um, so that's my PhD. I'll I'll, uh, I'll give a link to it uh, if you want to read about that in the description. Cheers, guys. Love you all.